Well, folks, we've been ripped off. So get this, folks. I haven't needed my truck in a while, so I've had it parked down on my other lot. It's been down there about six weeks, I guess. And it was parked down there both winters of 2017 and 2018, and I never had any issues. So I decided I'm going to go down there and start the truck. I want to take the plow off of it and bring it up here to the mountain. Just have it up here. I turn the key, it fires up, and it's extremely loud. I'm like, what the heck? How could something come disconnected just by sitting here. I'll tell you how, with a sawzall. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I climb under the truck to see what happened. There's a section of my exhaust pipe about this long that's been cut away and somebody stole my catalytic converter. Somebody actually had the audacity to go under my truck and cut part of my exhaust system and take it. I, I, I will never, ever, ever understand that mentality. When somebody just feels that they're entitled to what other people have worked hard for, I'll never wrap my freaking mind around it. I'll never understand it, you know? I couldn't believe it. So, you know, I'm, I'm insured. It, it won't cost me a fortune to fix it, hopefully. But it's a huge inconvenience, and it's very unsettling. Because now, now I, I feel like i got to worry about all of my stuff. You know? When I lived in New York, we had constant problems right from the get-go. Problems for all, from everyone. People would... Uh, cut my fences and trash my gates and snowmobile and ATV all over my land. Didn't care what they were destroying. You know, you couldn't stay on a trail. You had to go and cut fences and steal my stuff and vandalize my stuff. And I got sick of that and I, I moved out and I came back here. And since we've been here, I haven't had any issue. The only, the only issue I had was last winter... I had this green Jeep here parked down at the bottom of the road. Uh, it was there for about three weeks, and it just sat down there because the snowmobiling conditions, my road is a snowmobile trail in the winter, and when the conditions are good and there's a lot of sleds using the trail, I keep my vehicles off of it. And out of respect for the trail riders, you know. So, um... My Jeep, I just was sitting down there. It wasn't going up and down. It was just sitting down there for about three weeks. And I, I go and going to take it up the mountain one day, and I've got BB holes shot through my windshield. <laughs> now, I can't say for sure, but I know that in that three-week period of time where we weren't driving the road, that somebody went up over the mountain in a four-wheel drive, and rutted everything up. And of course, people blame us for it because we are the only residents up here. The, tr the tri tracks went all the way past the, the mountain and over the mountain and into the next town. They didn't come here, but nonetheless, we probably got blamed for it. And it was probably some snowmobile going, I'm gonna teach you a lesson for driving on the trail and shot holes in my windshield. But again, I can't say for sure, and that's nothing more than my assumption. But why else would somebody just shoot my windshield, right? So, uh, anyway. Yeah, so now I'm going to go out in the woods, and I'm going to pull all of my trail cameras, and now I'm going to have to keep trail cameras on watching all of my stuff. It's very, very disheartening, you know. I always say what comes around goes around, and every act you take is setting up your own karma, and this kind of crap will come back to that guy, and he probably gets his issue of crap because this is the stuff that he dishes out, so he gets more of it in return, and then he just keeps dishing it out, and that's how the whole system works. It really does. 
I mean, even though you're a really good person and all you do is good deeds, it doesn't mean that nothing bad is going to happen to you like, like this, you know. And it's the same way on YouTube. I, I work uh, very hard on putting out good original content. Like this last video, even this last video about refrigeration, didn't doesn't matter if you have no interest in living off the grid. The information in there could help you keep, you know, preserve some food for a while, extend the shelf life of it anyway. If there was a major power outage, give some people some ideas that help them along the way. And yet I still got bashed on that, you know. I mean, and p picking at me for whatever reason they could. You know, and it's the same way with that rocket stove video. You know, I made that rocket stove video. It was my own original design, and I put it out there. And that that little device could save people's lives because if we had a shit hit the fan situation, where you couldn't turn your faucet and get water, we can't survive without water. And with that little device, you could cook food and boil rainwater. And, and save your life and save your family's life and you don't need a saw or anything you just break little twigs that you find all over the ground and be able to boil water but yet doesn't matter doesn't matter just in, in the inbox every single day is more flak attacks it's disheartening when you you know you, you think about it and you go you mean hasn't the human race even evolved at all they're still like cavemen you know you see somebody with a chunk of meat, so you go hit them in over the head with a club so you can take their chunk of meat. And in this case, they go under my truck with a sawzall and steal my catalytic converter. <laughs> yeah! So, I gotta go get my trail cams, man. Now it's a different game. Even living up here on the mountain, you can't escape the crap. Yeah. So, I'm heading out this morning just to round up all of my trail cameras. I've had them in the woods for a long time. <laughs> and I decided I'm going to go ahead and pull them all. And unfortunately now i got to keep some watching all of my possessions. Kind of ridiculous, isn't it? But anyway, I decided to do this this morning. Pretty tough going. I like right now I'm walking and the snow is gone for the most part and that's easy going and then I'll get into areas where it's about 14 to 16 inches deep and crusted over and you walk along and one leg falls through and it keeps jolting your hips and knees you know and then you get glare ice so uh, I didn't want to bring my snowshoes enough to take them on and off and on and off but uh, I've got my cleats on so, uh, so far so good, but I've got to tell you, you got to watch your step, and uh, it's really no fun walking. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have some action on the cameras. I haven't checked them in probably two weeks now. Uh, I've been getting some good stuff occasionally, so most of the batteries are probably dead now, but we'll see. I'm going to go round them up. Now these are some of my old snowshoe tracks, but we have some fresher moose tracks here. Came through, and I got a camera right there. So probably have a moose on that one. Looks like the batteries were still good. Got the moose on the camera. I filmed a lot of moose in this spot. Got a deer too, giving the camera the old sniff test. Nice to see the deer back in the neighborhood again. Alrighty, here's another one. It is a pretty day. Oh no, look at this. <laughs> there they go with the milk duds again. <laughs> well, here's some deer tracks. I haven't seen any deer tracks in a long time. Now, the deer go someplace to yard up. They leave the mountain. Where they go to, I don't know. Because we trek all over the place and rarely see a deer track in the winter. Be one here or there. And here's some here. Here, walk over here. Walk right here. 
<laughs> and the camera's right there. So if the batteries are still good, we should have this deer on the camera. I could see from the tracks that a deer came right up close to the camera, but this camera makes a faint sound when it's filming. It spooked the deer and he backed right out of it. <laughs> My second camera picked up these two deer at the same location. I got a moose there too, but they are always a familiar sight at this spot. And a snowshoe hare. Now that's a critter that's been named appropriately. Those big feet keep them from sinking in the snow and they can run across the top of fresh powder. You see what I mean? <laughs> well, I've come down out of the high country, got all those cameras. I'm down in the valley now. Uh, got some beaver activity here. I've been following this beaver um, since early winter. I'll show you what he's got going on. You can see he's been really busy. He's building a little bit of a dam here. He's got the start of a lodge right here. Although I wonder with the rise in water now from the runoff of the spring, if he's even got any space to live in there. I don't know. I've got a camera here, and I've got another camera right here. And I had a whole bunch more, but I pulled those. So I'm gonna yank these up, and maybe we get some beaver activity. Looks like he's been quite busy since I've been here last. Well, there's the beaver, and he's heading out to cut some brush. Once he makes his selection, it only takes him about 60 seconds to cut it down. Then he drags it back home, where he stores it in the water by his lodge. Now, beavers are notorious for staying busy, and they can clear a lot of brush in a short amount of time. They eat the bark from it and use the leftover wood for the construction of their lodge and dam. When the getting's good, he'll cut brush day and night, and then he stores it beneath the ice so it'll be accessible when the creek is frozen over. Now, if you ask me, I'd say that's just good backwoods logic. <laughs> yes, sir. And the boss out of walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the Boss 